in Science 101. Science 101 and what to expect this fall webinar. If you haven't already done so, please share your name and where you're joining us from in the chat. We have live transcript closed captioning uh, enabled for this webinar. At the bottom of your screen, you can select live transcript and select show subtitle if you'd like to see the transcript as we work through the, the event. We prefer that you ask your questions using the Q&A function. You can submit your questions at any time during the event, even while our speakers are presenting, and we'll aim to answer all your questions during the Q&A portion of the event. To keep things streamlined during the Q&A, we will amalgamate similar questions. Please note that the chat function will be turned off during our speaker's presentations, although we will enable it for the Q&A function during that time period. That's great. I see people adding in their, their welcome and where they're, they're coming joining us from. That's excellent. So Simon Fraser University respectfully acknowledges the Musqueam, Squamish, Tsleil-Waututh, Katsi, Kwikwetlam, Kaikat, Kwantlen, Samiamo, and Sawasan peoples on whose unceded traditional territories our three campuses reside. I'm a settler with British and Irish background. My family has been in Canada between one and four generations, and I currently reside in Coquitlam. The Coquitlam Nation draws its name, Red Fish Up the River, from the early spring sockeye run up the Coquitlam River and Coquitlam Lake prior to the construction of the Coquitlam Dam, where the sockeye ran so thick that it was difficult to navigate the canoes. The image of the salmon running up the river evokes an image of life stages similar to each of you moving from high school or college through university and into adulthood. We at the Faculty of Science recognize that we are uninvited guests on this land, and we're always learning the value of building relationships based on this trust and mutual respect even beyond today's event. We encourage you to visit native-land.ca uh, to learn more about the traditional territories that you live, work, and play in. And I think that's going to come up on the chat as well, so you're going to see a link to that website. We're so pleased that you're joining us today, and it's nice to have so many new students, students who will soon be new friends and classmates from different places and with different science interests all here together. We know this fall will be a special time for your studies with us. Today, we'll be hearing from a number of different speakers. First, Dr. Angie Brooks-Wilson, Dean of the Faculty of Science. Science recruiter, Claire Wilson. Many of you will already know Claire. Science co-op coordinator, Magnus Billing. And science students, Ananga Bajgai and Nehal Dadral. I'd like to introduce our first speaker, Dr. Angie Brooks-Wilson, for, gre for greetings from the Faculty of Science. Welcome, Angie. Thank you very much, Suzanne. And welcome everyone and congratulations to our new science students. I'm delighted to see so many of you at the event today. And uh, you should know that being admitted to one of our rigorous science programs at SFU is quite an accomplishment. Um, as Suzanne said, my name is Angie Brooks Wilson. I'm the Dean of Science. And I was also an SFU undergraduate student back in the day and I was also an SFU co-op student, so I have an understanding of the excitement I hope you're feeling right now. I want you to know that you're joining a community of students who are passionate about their studies. We have award-winning researchers and instructors. We have passionate staff and faculty who are eager to support and guide you throughout your degrees. Science is SFU's second largest faculty, and we're home to over 4,500 undergraduate students. I'm very well excited to welcome you to this large but welcoming community. Our programs in the Faculty of Science are designed to inspire you in a variety of ways, from taking part in research projects in the lab or out in the field, to doing co-op work terms with companies or government agencies or research labs, and ultimately finding your way to a diverse set of careers that will make a difference in your own communities. I suspect that some of you are laser focused on a specific program that you want to pursue in one of our eight departments, while others 
may be interested in exploring your options more broadly. Either way, my team uh, here tonight will, be, will set you up for success in the Faculty of Science. I wanna share something that most of you probably don't suspect about moving uh, to university, going to university. Uh, one important aspect of your studies here at SFU is that you will learn from people who are truly experts in their fields. Most of your professors are authorities in a certain science area, and that area usually overlaps with, but may not be exactly what they teach. So for example, you may take a basic chemistry course from a professor who is a world-renowned expert on fuel cells for hydrogen-powered vehicles. Or you may take an ecology course from a professor who is literally the world's highest authority on shark populations. These are real SFU research professors. Another aspect um, of your education at SFU, which is important, is that there will be many opportunities for hands-on learning. In the Faculty of Science, we've been very deliberate in retaining an emphasis on high-quality lab courses where you can really cement what you've learned in a class. So please plan to take advantage of all the resources that we've put in place for you, your expert professors, your dedicated teaching assistants, academic advisors, peer tutors, and all of the extracurricular opportunities that make your degree well-rounded and your time more fun while you're here with us. And whether you're a brand new high school grad, a transfer student or a mature student, you will find the community and supports for you here in the Faculty of Science. So once again, congratulations to the students and thank you and congratulations to the parents and supporters as well for helping you get here. I can't wait to run into some of you in the hallways in, at SFU this fall. Great, thanks very much, Angie, for that. I'd like to now introduce Claire Wilson, our science recruiter, who's gonna let you know more about SciSpace and all the services and supports that are available to you. Great, thank you, Suzanne. It is such a pleasure to be here speaking to you all today. I see a lot of familiar names in the participant list of students that I've emailed or met with, chatted on the phone with over the past year during the application process. And now you're here, you have been admitted, you are through that step. What comes next, enrolling in your classes and preparing for your studies can seem a bit overwhelming, but that's what my colleagues in the SciSpace team, as well as our academic advisors are here to help with. First, let me tell you a little bit more about SciSpace. SciSpace is both a physical place at the Burnaby campus, uh, but it is also a resource hub for information and connecting with advisors and supporters that can be accessed online anywhere. We're here to help you navigate through your degree, so that means providing advice, resources, and supports. We opened up earlier this year in January, and we're in the northeast corner of the academic quadrangle, right by Renaissance Coffee. I know right now that description probably doesn't make a ton of sense, but as you get acquainted with campus, it will. Uh, plus, Renaissance is my favorite coffee shop on campus, and I think it might become yours too. You can come by SciSpace for scheduled or drop-in advising to discuss everything uh, from strategies for academic success to getting involved outside the classroom uh, and any random questions that you might have. Even without an appointment, come by to study, meet with friends, or just to say hello. The SciSpace team has many members. You've already met me. Since I mostly work with applicants and incoming students, it's going to often be my colleagues that you'll be connecting with, but I love when students that I met as applicants stay in touch, so definitely come and meet with me anytime. Neela Kojak is our secretary and will probably be the first smiling face you see in SciSpace. She can direct you towards resources in and out of science, help with scheduling appointments, and she is also in charge of picking the music playlist every day. So if you have any requests, she is our DJ. Colin Schuler ram is our Associate Academic Advisor and is the perfect person to see for general inquiries, like if you're not sure what you want to do if you want to pursue a joint major or how electives credit works. Colin can help. Aiden Wiki is our Student Success Coordinator and he is passionate about helping students meet their academic goals and ensuring that they thrive in the Faculty of Science. 
If you're ever feeling overwhelmed in a class or having trouble finding a school life balance, Aiden is the perfect person to see. And we have Thomas Leishner and Carmen Ho, who are student engagement coordinators. We've already talked a bit about how important it is to get involved outside the classroom, and Thomas and Carmen are excellent people to talk to about that. They support peer mentorship and welcome programs, as well as science clubs and departmental student unions. SciSpace also hosts other departments and offices like Career and Volunteer Services, Health and Counseling, the Center for Accessible Learning, International Services for Students, and Cooperative Education, who you'll be hearing more from in a bit. Last but not least, we have an incredible, uh, we have incredible peer, net, peer mentors and student volunteers that we work with. They create an amazing student community in science. I am so excited for you to get to hear from Ananga and Nehal in a little bit. By now, many of you will have completed university prep step one and perhaps even completed step two. For anyone who isn't familiar, university prep is a free, online course that will help prepare you for your academic transition to SFU. It guides you step by step through what you need to know before classes start. It's a great foundation of information and I really recommend completing steps one and steps two before drafting up your schedule and meeting with academic advisors. I also wanna let you know about a brand new course being offered this fall, Sci 190, First Year Success Strategies in Science. It's a one credit course, meaning it'll fit pretty smoothly with taking any number of courses, two, three, four courses. It will introduce you to skills that will enhance your time in science, and it's exclusively available to faculty of science students like yourselves. Each department in the faculty of science has a dedicated academic advisor who's here to help students in each program. There's also an advisor for the Surrey campus, Nadia, who's posting the links in the chat, uh, so you might even have two advisors. Academic advisors are the best folks to chat with regarding your specific program. Appointments can be booked through AdvisorLink, a service that lets students uh, make seamless appointments with their advisors. Many departments also put together recommended course schedules for new students, which can be really helpful to use as a base when planning your own classes. So to be sure to check out your department's website and advising page for the most up-to-date information. I mentioned the Surrey campus a little earlier. Some of you might not know that you can actually take many of your first year science courses at the Surrey campus if you so choose. If you happen to live a bit closer to the Surrey campus or would just prefer to take classes there, I would recommend making sure you, we have you noted as a Surrey campus student. If you're not, our Surrey campus academic advisor, <coughs> Nadia Williams can help. She's available at science underscore advisor at sfu.ca. The last piece of advice I want to share with you is don't be a stranger. We are absolutely here to help and support you. Advisors, professors, we aren't scary, or at least we don't try to be. Uh, we really wanna see you thrive in science and we'll do everything we can to make your time here fulfilling. I'm so glad you were able to attend today and I cannot wait to meet you in the fall. I'll turn things back over to Suzanne. Thanks very much, Claire, for all of that. That was a lot of information. And uh, if somebody uh, joining us is feeling a little overwhelmed, not to worry, um, you will hear that there is going to be an email coming out and follow up to this event with links to information that we're providing. Um, and so there are lots of resources if you have questions um, and as well, a link to the recording for this event. So you'll, I'll, I'll say that again near the end, but just so you're not feeling too overwhelmed about all the information. Um, we just want to make sure you have what you need to be successful as you join us in the fall. So thank you again, Claire. And now I would like to introduce Magnus Billings, Cooperative Education Coordinator for the Faculty of Science. Thanks, Magnus. Thank you, Suzanne. Fantastic. Welcome, everybody. I'm going to fly through some slides here. So hang on to your seats. Uh, <clears throat> oopsies. There we go. Uh, I am here to talk a little bit about cooperative education, specifically science co-op. Uh, co-op at SFU has a 40 year plus history. It is what, what I coined one of our flagship programs at SFU. And as you heard Angie, our Dean say, uh, she was a part of that program. So uh, the excellence is, is recognized absolutely and very much supported by administration faculty. Some of you may not necessarily know what co-op is. We hear different ideas of what it is. So I'm just gonna kind of run through it very quickly. Uh, co-op is a, an accredited educational program. And the idea is to integrate it 
into your academic studies. These are work experiences that are going to be sandwiched in between various academic semesters as you move through your undergraduate program. Uh, they are paid full time work terms, so you are able to help finance your education. And really, it helps, a facil it helps facilitate a, a process of reflection and self learning, which is very much a part of that educational process. And for those of you that complete uh, your three co op semesters, you will walk away with a degree designation, uh, a Bachelor of Science co-op degree. I want to introduce you to some of our team here. So you will see myself there on the left, uh, but I also have three colleagues that uh, support all of the students across all of our science co-op programs. And these are representative of all the different disciplines within the Faculty of Science. So we're really, really pleased to be able to support uh, different paths for students and ensure that there is work integrated learning there for everyone. Some of the benefits of co-op, uh, as you may or may not know, uh, you are able to tap into incredible experiences, some of which are not going to be available to the average student. These are exclusive to co-op students. Uh, these are largely in the lower mainland, but some of them extend into BC, Canada, the United States, and as we move further outside of the pandemic, globally as well. You are going to craft a most excellent resume as you go through your undergraduate uh, experiences. Uh, you're going to have have interview access where you're going to work one on one with a coordinator so you can nail those interviews and then you are going to have a fantastic cover letter as well something that's going to go beyond what chat GPT is going to be able to provide you. If you're an international student, uh, you are also able to get a co op work visa that's going to allow you to work in Canada and support your co op journey. A couple of other benefits to, to mention, of course, is that you really get a better understanding of what your courses are all about. Uh, when you're applying these uh, skills and knowledge in work environments, you bring back knowledge and you look at your courses in a different way. And in some cases, we see that students really uh, take a different approach and, and their, their grades increase. Um, you're going to be accessing technologies that we may not hear, have here on campus, which is also fantastic. And of course, you're going to start that process of building a network in a really fun and friendly way. You're going to develop better communication skills. Be know, you're going to know how to market yourself. And of course, you're always going to have a dedicated staff member in the co-op team to help you at any point in that journey. Um, I thought I'd throw a few sample co-op employers up here. It's far beyond this, but a bit of an A to Z here. Some of the employers you're going to recognize and some you're not. Um, and the same goes with jobs that are going to present. Uh, but that's part of the excitement is being able to find out different companies that might exist and different roles that you had no idea existed. I thought as we moved forward, uh, I'd try and focus this a little bit on your first semester or two. Uh, so most of you are going to be applying to co-op as you move into your second or third semesters. Uh, but when you join us here in September, I want everybody to kind of think about some things that you could do right now. And that is, if you have interest in field work, now is the time to start jumpstarting that driver's license with uh, graduated licensing. It can take a long time to get that in or even your class five. So let's get started on that if your interests lie in field work. Uh, September has great energy here on campus. Uh, you'll see lots of activities with student unions and society. So I really want to encourage you to join a discipline related student union, uh, whether it's your major or your intended major, I, I encourage you to apply. Um, we're always very receptive here in the co-op uh, offices to visitors impromptu uh, if you want to send us an email. So introduce yourselves and start that conversation with us. The co-op office here at SFU also has an information session every semester, September, January, and May. So you might want to join us for an intro to co-op in September. And then lastly, uh, getting that process started. Some of you have done volunteer experience. Some of you have got part-time experience. All of that lends itself to your journey through co-op. So uh, I encourage you to move forward with that. And then lastly, uh, there is our contact information. We're uh, again at your disposal, and certainly uh, you're easy. We're easy to find on the SFU Co-op website. Thanks, everyone. Hi, everyone, and thank you, Magnus, for that presentation. Um, it's really actually a co-op is a, a wonderful way to apply the uh, things that you're learning in the classroom to the real life experience. So I would really encourage you to look into that.
Now I'd like to introduce Nehal Dudral. Nehal is a fourth year biological sciences major with a concentration in ecology, evolution, and conservation. She's recently completed her term as the VP external for the Science Undergraduate Society. So Nehal, welcome. Thank you. Thank you so much. Hi, everybody. I hope you're all doing well. Welcome to tonight. Um, firstly, I do want to start off with a territorial acknowledgement. Uh, I do. I res respectfully acknowledge that I'm currently residing on the traditional territory of the Kati Semiamu Kwantlen Nations. I was once told that making the land acknowledgements personal and from the heart is a great way to show respect. So I do like to mention that I grew up on Treaty 1 territory, which is the southern part of Manitoba. This was a place where the first steps towards some kind of reconciliation came to be, and I'm proud to have grown up there and continue to be a part of its history and reconciliation. So I think making things personal like that is great. And if you ever do have to make territorial acknowledgements, I do hope that you add in some sort of flavor to it. Um, thank you for giving me that moment. I'll introduce myself now. My name is Nahal. I'm currently going into my fifth year of university, but fourth year credit wise. I'm currently a biology major, like Suzanne had mentioned, and I'm focusing on the ecology, evolution, and conservation stream. My journey at SFU started as a transfer student. I came to SFU from the University of Manitoba in the fall of 2021, so about two years ago. Moving to a new university during COVID was definitely not easy. I'm a very social and outgoing person, but because of COVID, SFU was closed and I didn't get to meet many people in person. But once the campus did start to reopen, the shift in the, com in the SFU community was a sight to see. So many things started to go on and the campus really came alive. The great thing about being a science student at SFU is that you can always meet new people because someone around you, whether it be lab or lecture, will always be thinking, what did they just say? So if you're worrying about friends, don't be. Um, if we go back to the first slide, thank you. On there, you can see a bunch of different pictures of my time at SFU. Um, some of them are for my student involvement and some are for my classes. The picture with the SFU logo is from Welcome Day 2022. I'm always proud to say, hey, I'm in that picture, even though you can't even see me. This picture is important to me as it was the first Welcome Day back in person after COVID. And I, it was my first one as a hive leader, who you will eventually meet in August, late August. Hive leaders are responsible for welcoming the new students to SFU through the SFU 101 course and helping them, out, helping them out with any questions they might have. We also plan events to meet each other. And on welcome day, we all tour the university together and go do different activities. Usually they're science-based. So welcome day as a hive leader is definitely one of my favorite memories at SFU and I hope you all get to experience it as well. The next picture I wanna talk about is the one underneath the SUS logo. This is my garden plot. I was lucky to be a part of the Embark Sustainability Learning Gardens cohort last summer. Every Thursday, we got together and tended to our garden plots. I learned how to grow plants using different techniques that I'd never even heard of. I grew so many different types of vegetables, and it did help me because I had some of the science background, so I got to apply it. Embark Sustainability is a truly an amazing organization, and they always have events catered towards climate justice and sustainable life skills, which is why I chose my concentration after becoming a gardener, that's when I decided I wanted to be in the evolution, ecology, and conservation stream. So if you're thinking about it, I definitely do recommend that. It was amazing. It was an amazing experience and I don't regret it. And I probably am going to do it again because I got to take home like new vegetables every single week. So that was fun. The next picture I do want to talk about is well, the next three pictures, sorry. The next three pictures I wanna talk about are the ones at the bottom. They are from my time as the vice president external for, for the Science Undergraduate Society. I was a VP external from June, 2022 till May of this year. The Science Undergraduate Society is a faculty student union that advocates and throws events for the science student population. The first big event we threw in my term was our SUS Frosh 2022. That's the picture with me underneath the balloon arch that I made. Um, this event is for all the new science students. That means you guys. Usually it's an all day event where you guys get to go around campus and explore and meet each other. And there's always lots of games. It was truly a super fun time and I hope you all get to experience it one day. Please do keep a lookout for science undergraduate society events. Um, I'm currently done my time there, but I love the organization and I will always, always advocate for them. The other two pictures are on the left from our winter formal. 
I got a chance to speak at our winter formal to talk about our sponsors. Um, Science World sponsored us for Frosh and this, so I'm very proud of that. Um, and you can see our Dean of Science with me as well. This event is, we threw this February and it's just a nice little dinner that we um, host for science students and we played some games and we just had a really nice night. Um, you would never be able to tell that I had a huge paper due that night that I wrote at formal and I submitted it right at midnight. Um, so yeah, you never know what'll happen. Um, the pictures on the side are different classroom views that I think are really cool. Um, the first one is from the fifth floor of the AQ and the one on the bottom is a trail on the north side of SFU during one of my biology labs. The duality that you see is truly remarkable. I'm so grateful that I'm part and that I'm a part of such a cool program. Um, where else would you be able to go on a hike and collect samples for research later on? If you do choose to be a biology major, we have a huge advantage in that our labs are literally our backyards. So you might even have a lab where you have to go pick clovers from your backyard, which I had to do. So you never know. When it comes to biology, our academic advisor, Emilia, is amazing i cannot tell you how many times i have gone to her and been like hey i want to do this now i want to do this i want to do that and she's always been really really accepting no judgment and she's been like okay this is what we'll do this is what we'll do so if you ever do think hey i don't know if i'm enjoying this anymore and i want to switch go out there figure it out ask for help that's my biggest advice for you about that sort of situation because i've been there that is me i always want to do more than i think i can do so um Next slide, I will talk about the major takeaways I want you guys to take from what I just said. Do not be scared to ask for help. You'll be surprised how many times TAs, professors get excited when you go to them to ask for questions. So please, please, please don't be scared to ask for help. Take your time. This is your university experience. If you think you cannot do that degree in four years, it's okay. Because trust me, someone else is probably going through the same thing. I'm going to take probably five years to complete my degree. I was a transfer student. I've been through the ringer and I'm still going. So don't even stress. OK, so take this is your university story. You need to live yours. It's OK to need breaks. Breaks, burnout in, re burnout in university is just too real. And knowing when to step back and take a breather is a great skill to have. Nothing is worth more than yourself. Get involved as much as you can. As you saw, I did a lot of things and I still went to school and I tried to do that because that was my way of taking breaks. Um, and you never know, you might be writing a paper at your events. So there's me dancing and then I, I, I would dance and then I would go back and write a paragraph and I'd go dance again. So you never know what might happen, but there's always so many opportunities on campus. You can join a club, become a high leader, volunteer in a lab, which I hope to do soon. And you can even get a campus job, which I've done multiple of. Do what interests you. If you feel like you're not loving what you're doing, it's okay to change. There's so many different things you can do and don't beat yourself up over the fact that you weren't able to do what you initially wanted to do. Always read the syllabus, please. This is so important, almost always. The deadlines and course information are in there. Eventually you guys will join classroom group chats and so many people ask questions that are easily found in the syllabus. It gets frustrating sometimes for the others, so be better. And lastly, have fun. There's always something going on to have fun on campus. Put yourself out there. There's always something for everyone. Thank you so much for listening to me go on and on. I want to thank all the organizers for allowing me to speak today. And if you guys have any questions, my email is on the first slide. And who knows, maybe I'll be your hive leader this fall. Thanks so much, everyone. And I, Nehal, thank you so much for that. And I hope you did well on your paper. <laughs> I'm glad to hear that. I'd now like to introduce Ananga Bajgai. Ananga is a third year student pursuing a double major in applied mathematics and computing science. Since transferring to SFU in January 2022, he's been involved in many aspects of student life and is currently conducting research with Dr. Aileen McPherson and Dr. Lloyd Elliott. Thanks, Ananga. Hi, everybody. Um, hope you're all well. And so this, I'm going to be talking a little bit about my SFU experience today. So as mentioned, I am a third year student doing a double major in computer science and applied mathematics. I'm also working as a research assistant this summer. I will be talking about the research a bit later. Um, but first thing I wanna talk about 
Thank you. Uh, first thing I want to talk about is academics. Uh, from my experience, courses at SFU have been significantly harder than at least like high school courses. And the level of expectation is also significantly greater. And so, like, for example, I remember I, I took this is just my experience, but I took calculus 12 in high school. And then I, when I took calculus one here, it was just completely different things. It was, it was I, I was spending way more time doing calc one here than in high school. And it's weird because the core concepts are supposed to be the same. You're supposed to be learning like very similar things, maybe just a little bit more, but yeah. Um, so I think to succeed in a very general view, it's just, it just comes down to just spending time with the material and having good study habits. Um, as a few, I think kind of, throughout the year has like workshops and things like that on study habits. I would definitely recommend you guys check those out. And even just on um, YouTube, there's like so many videos out there. Just, I, I think it'd be really worthwhile to just look up some videos and, and more importantly, kind of implement what they, with the tips they give you. Uh, that can really go a long way. But yeah, so in terms of takeaways, um, I might not do it. I might not talk about all these points, but uh, one point at least I find very important is keeping up with the lecture material. This is especially the case if you're doing like four or five courses, because that's a lot of work. And let's say you miss like two days of classes, two days worth of lectures. That, that, that can translate to 10 hours of lecture time. But if you're trying to learn that material like on your own time, at least for myself, that, that's almost 20 hours of work. And you got to realize the next day or the next next day, you have classes again. So it can, falling behind can lead to a very, and very negative feedback loop. So just from experience, I would recommend try your best to keep up with lecture materials and use your office hours. Um, the instructors are kind of have delegated like an hour that week just to like help you guys. So definitely use it. And uh, I would spec also, I would kind of note, especially closer to the finals time, um, really you don't want to be falling behind and you want to be studying ahead because the worst thing that you can do, and this is coming from experience, is oh, finals week from now, and you're like two weeks behind. And so you're just scrambling to learn those learn those two weeks of materials. And then you still have to review the 10 weeks prior to that. So definitely start early. And at the same time, um, I think you also kind of have, need to have like some kind of a balance. Um, so it shouldn't be that every day you're just doing school and you don't have time to, for, to get sleep or you have no time to do anything else. I don't think it should ever be at that point because like kind of Nahal mentioned earlier, it can just lead to burnout. And I kind of went through this actually, even like last semester, I, I, I was like trying to take on too many courses and I just got burnt and I just had no motivation for some reason. And so I think it's really good just to really kind of have a balance, but at the same time, you got to realize school is, should be a priority. It should. So like, that's where the balance comes in. Um, but yeah, I think next up, I'll kind of talk about, I guess, quickly about my research this semester. Um, oh, I didn't know it did the fate. That's kind of cool. Uh, cause I didn't have it, but I made it. But so for research, <laughs> um, this semester I'm doing, uh, I'm working as a research assistant and my project is kind of an interdisciplinary project in mathematics, statistics, and biology. So in a very, like a general uh, description. It's kind of investigating whether like an animal, a species as evolution history can affect how susceptible they are to being threatened with infection. Um, I, it's, go, it's, it's been going really great so far. And this is really cool, I, I find. But last week, um, something happened with our data. It wasn't as accurate as we want it to be. So we had to kind of switch our approach. And the approach has been using like GBT, like the, the tool they use for chat GBT in our research. So that's going to be like really cool in, in the coming weeks. Um, but I kind of mainly did this research to kind of gain experience, try something new. And it was also, I was kind of on the fence of uh, grad school, I thought. So I just, this just this research experience would really, uh, it's just really useful for that and give you kind of gives you a taste of what being a graduate student is like. So that's why I kind of did it. It's also like a really cool summer job I find, uh, better than uh, like some of my retail work in the past. Um, sorry, next slide, thank you. Um, and, and if you guys are interested, some suggestions I have is, as if you have something called like a USRA program, well, it's, I guess it's more like a national thing, but a USRA program essentially is 
the government, it's kind of from the government, they give you some uh, some funding. So all you have to like really do to get it is like apply like during January time. I guess this is more so for like second, third or fourth years, but I have had a friend that did it in their first year. So you never know. Sometimes like if you're in the right program and if there just isn't enough applicants, maybe you might get, you might get it. So um, if you're interested in grad school or, again, or in the fence, then on that, I think you might as well apply. Um, and another thing also, uh, I guess a lot, a lot of people know this, but you can totally just ask your instructors for research opportunities, like during office hours or after, like after class, like um, I was a high leader as well, like last semester. And I had a student and he told me this semester that he just, he, he's a first year and he just asked his um, professor for a research opportunity. And he's now kind of helping the professor at their lab doing some data stuff. And I think that's, that's really great because that gives you that experience. And when you're applying for co-op or whatnot later, I think that can look great. And even, or even USRAs or whatnot, I think that's also good. So definitely just ask. Um, worst case, they, they'll, they'll say no, but sometimes they might even like know someone who has opportunities for you. So um, yeah. Um, uh, another, the last facet I wanna kind of talk about is extracurriculars. And I think Nehal talked a lot about this. I like fully agree. It's, it's really good to just go uh, just beyond classwork, do things that go beyond classwork uh, and such. I have taken part in different, uh, in different volunteer opportunities like Hive Leader, just like Nehal. Uh, I've, I've, I'm also a member of the Science Undergraduate Society where I'm VP internal. Um, overall, I think uh, just doing things like that, just uh, you develop skills, um, like you develop teamwork skills, uh, like public speaking skills, just like this, because this is a sub volunteer uh, event thing as well, um, or even just uh, leadership skills, which I think can be really valuable just throughout life. Um, so like I mentioned with the, sorry, can we go back one slide? Thank you. Um, with, so Science Undergraduate Society, I am VP internal there. I kind of mentioned this because I guess this is my mo more like significant uh, place I volunteer at or I take part in a school. And uh, one thing I want to bring up is we do have a Discord of more than uh, like 3,000 students. Uh, and we have like channels for each science student, si sorry, science classes. So I do recommend you guys check it out. We have our Instagram there on the left. So if you guys just go to the Instagram, I think in link in bio, there is the Discord. And you can also like kind of ask other students, any like upper level science students, any questions you may have. Cause sometimes like there's like more, so it's just sometimes nice to have kind of hear from like different types of people, I guess. Like we have our wonderful um, advisors and whatnot, but sometimes I guess you want to hear from the students. So uh, that, that's, I just wanted to bring that up. And lastly for extracurriculars, I do want to mention we do have a rec center. So. The thing is, uh, in your tuition, uh, you you automatically pay for the rec center, and you're you so in that you get free access to our like weightlifting gym, and then a bunch of different like drop-in programs. Um, I recently, I kind of bring this up because recently I've been using it, and I've really like enjoyed playing badminton with my friends there. And so I would kind of recommend you guys do the same. They have other sports also. I think they have like basketball intramurals. They have drop-ins for like soccer and like other things. And oh, also. The first week, or first or second week, definitely called, I guess that's kind of far away, but um, definitely called the trial week. So you can like, uh, you can kind of try out any of their different programs for free. Like there's like yoga, dancing, and like kendo, I think, just things like that. So I just wanted to kind of give a shout out to that. Um, but this is, sorry, just the next slide, please. And yeah, that's the end of my presentation. Thank you all for listening. and. I guess if you have any questions, uh, there's the question section there. Uh, maybe I'll be able to answer later. Thank you. Thank you, Vananga. That was that was great, and uh, and I really appreciate the advice to make sure you speak with your instructors, um, not only about your courses but potential research opportunities. And I think it's really important not to be afraid to speak with them. So so thank you for pointing that out. So, uh, so thank you very much for, for that. Um, we've been receiving your questions during the presentation. And if we don't have a time to address every question during our allotted time, we will be sure to include responses in our follow-up email uh, after the event. To keep things streamlined during the Q&A, we will be amalgamating similar questions though. So uh, 
<clears throat> Let me just see just for a second. Uh, what uh, we're going to start off with is uh, who can I turn to if I have questions about course selection and differences between courses? So I think, and also who can I turn to when I have questions about degree completion requirements? Maybe we'll start with Claire on that. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, so when it comes to questions that are about your specific program, so like let's say you're a biological sciences major like Nehal, um, the biology department at every department has a dedicated advisor for students either in that program or who are intending to enter into that program. So they are the absolute best folks to talk to about am I on track to complete this program? Um, they often also have really great advice for what order to take courses in. You know, it might be fine to take them in any order, but they might have some uh, advice that they can give you after working with so many students over the years as to what their recommendations are. Um, in addition to the uh, departmental advisors, there's also the whole size based team in Wiki, our student success coordinator, um, uh, Colin Schuler Ram, who's our associate academic advisor, uh, as well as our Surrey campus advisor, Nadia Williams. There's a ton of support. So, I guess the short to summarize all that, when in doubt, if you're ever not sure, you can always start with size space. You can always swing by or contact size space. We can get you pointed in the right direction, whether that's us or the departmental advisor or any other resource. Thank you, Claire. Now, how do people find AdvisorLink? Oh, that is a fantastic question. And perhaps I will ask my colleagues, Aiden or Nadia, who are popping links in the chat, to include that. Um, AdvisorLink, you will log into it. You'll access it with your new computing ID. That's what you use to create your SFU email address. That's now essentially going to be your login for everything. So it is your key to advisor link um, and also your SFU email, your student center where you'll be enrolling in classes. It is now the end all be all. Uh, that link is probably coming in just a moment. Great. Thanks very much. So Magnus, there's a couple of questions about co-op. Um, first off, how do I get started with co-op? Like what are the requirements and are they different for international students? Uh, there is no distinction, thanks, Suzanne, between a domestic student and an international student. Um, but as far as getting started, it, it really is kind of an individual thing, and students are welcome to come in their first semester. But I think you'll find that you want to have some some courses and labs underneath you to to market yourself with. So we generally find students are coming and applying to the co-op program at around the 30 credit marker. Okay, thanks very much. Um, now, I think maybe I might ask a question of Angie. So Angie, maybe you can talk about what is it like, you know, being in a classroom from an instructor's perspective? What can people expect with that interaction with instructors? That is a great question uh, because people don't usually, usually ask about the point of view of the instructor. So um, actually, um, many instructors find that teaching is really fun. Being in, being in the classroom with a large number of students who are interested in the material uh, is really a lovely experience. Uh, I think that some of the best thing parts of, of being in a classroom with students and, and interacting with them is when students come and ask you real questions about, I don't understand this thing, or, or what does this mean, or how is this used? And you can draw a picture on a blackboard or a whiteboard. You can meet in office hours and you can see the student go, oh, that's how it works. Uh, and that's really, really gratifying. Uh, so, uh, you know, seeing that understanding come through, how, seeing students have, have fun and learn about applications uh, is really the best part uh, of instructing. Great, thanks very much. Now, Nehal, we have a question about labs. So what are they, how do they work and, and how often do they happen? So what's your experience with labs? With labs, it really depends on the course. I know like in first year chemistry, biology, they tend to be weekly or bi-weekly depending on, I mean, it's been a while since I did first year labs, but um, usually they're bi-weekly or weekly. But I know once you get into the more like Upper, like my the one I showed you with the the trail lab that was almost every week so it really depends on the course and the intensity of the course but usually first year I think they stick to bi-weekly um just because they know th there's so many labs to take like I know your first year you're usually going to take biochem physics so they all have labs so usually they, they tend to do it bi-weekly so that's what you should expect in your first year but as you get um in your more concentrated fields it does change depending on the intensity of the program and the course but 
first year bi-weekly usually yeah yeah and that's usually in an actual physical lab yes. you're in the lab and yeah working Less with COVID the different materials yeah. yeah now now that we're post-covid that's great thanks very much um so ananga maybe you can help with this one how do you decide how much you know which electives to take how many classes to take at a time sort of what's your experience with that how do you pick electives um electives i hear you. this is kind of bad but my first semester i was a transfer student as well um at the previous institution i was at uh i took my electives i took were like visual culture and art history but i only did it because my friends were there and i'm saying do not do that um just <laughs> <laughs> like I, I i was just coming right from high school and i was like my friend my best friend was like oh i'm doing that course sounds so easy but Yes, uh, the teacher was nice, but I, I don't think that was a good move for me. I think for electives, you should kind of just do what you're interested in. Like uh, then when I transferred to SFU, I took Econ 103 and that was just because I was kind of interested by it and 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 it went well. And so some of my friends have said this also, um, sometimes for GPA boosters, it will just be the courses that you're interested in because you'll kind of like to learn it. And so if you're doing an easy elective for GPA boosting, I think sometimes just it, it might just be good to just do what you're interested in. Um, so maybe that's my answer for electives, just whatever seems the most appealing, whatever seems the most interesting, just do that. And and I guess for course course workload, I think it depends on your program, but, but at SFU, I guess it is pretty common not to do five courses. I guess this isn't official advice because <laughs> we have advisors here, but uh, um, I would say uh, I think it just depends on your academic strength, I guess, or and or even like how much free time you want, because five courses, that's essentially a full time job. Like I did four courses in my first semester and I was thinking about it. I think I probably spent like just the four courses. It was 14 units, but I probably spent like 30, 35 a week hours like that, like working like on school per week. And then if you have like a job or something like I did, it was. It was really bad. So I think it depends how much free time you, you have and uh, yeah. Okay. And I know um, for some people, you might be looking at your program and looking at your department and your, your program course requirements, but going to the academic calendar or looking at the larger options will give you ideas about courses that might not be in your field. And then you can take advantage of things that interest you, like, you know, I'd like to learn about Japanese history or, you know, other areas that might also, you know, just pique your interest and you learn a little bit about the world. So great. Thank you. Now, what would be uh, maybe uh, for Nahal, what would be the normal size of a, of a class? Like, what is it like going into those first year classes? And did you find it overwhelming? It was brutal. It was scary. It was I'm I'm outgoing. And I was like, that is a lot of people, especially first year classes. Obviously, those are the biggest um, like cal calculus, like the, the main calculus was oh my gosh there's so many people and like it's overwhelming at first but eventually you get used to it plus like a lot of people stop showing up so it's kind of it's kind of do trickle down but it is overwhelming and first year classes are always bigger just because everybody has to take those same classes like i mentioned before but it's i mean you have to remember you're all there for the same reason so the person sitting next to you might be feeling the same way so you know maybe like start a conversation ease into it and like usually the instructors know that the class is huge, so they will be more, um, you know, comforting when you go talk to them because they know you're first year and you're trying to, you know, get used to it. So, yeah, but once you get in, like I said, once you start concentrating more in your degree, the class sizes do get smaller. Um, so you get you get to be a more tight knit group. Yeah. Yeah. And did you find it better with tutorials or, you know, with the, the math workshops? Yes, tutorials were a lot better. They were similar to like what I would experience in high school, which is like around 20 students. So tutorials do chop up the class size and you get to meet those people when in your tutorials and you get to feel more comfortable. But yeah, it is overwhelming at first, but obviously tutorials and workshops, like you mentioned, they, they're all helpful. Um, one on one time with the professor TA is also always a great way to ease into it. That's great. Thank you very much. Now, Claire, maybe you can offer uh, some information about career advice. Who do I talk yeah. to about career advice? What kind of careers are out there? How do we get uh, involved in that? Yeah. So in addition to my 
heartfelt belief that co-op is one of the single most valuable things that you can do in university. So I'm so, so grateful that Magnus is here. Um, and that though, it's not the end all and be all of career preparedness. Um, it can also mean getting involved with research, research like Anunga is doing. It can be doing extracurricular activities like, you know, Neha mentioned being a hive leader and Naga mentioned being a hive leader. I can personally tell you, I can trace a direct line from my first volunteer experience as a welcome leader at SFU to my first job as a tour guide to the career that I have now uh, working for the Faculty of Science. That is, you know, this is not a career I thought existed when I first started in university and those experiences brought it to me. And I think that's one of the best values of things like um, co-op and other career services is that it will just expose you to so many more careers that are out there. For any of you that have a longer term career goal, like it's not uncommon for students coming into science to have a professional program in mind in the future, you know, medicine, dentistry, physiotherapy, uh, or graduate school. Those are fantastic goals and you absolutely should work towards them. But I would also say don't put blinders on. There are so many more careers that exist than uh, you know about at this point and so many more courses, so many more programs. So have those long-term goals in mind, but definitely be open to other things along the way. But I have a feeling Magnus probably has some things to say too. So perhaps I'll turn it over to him as well. <laughs> I think you spoke very well to that. Uh, I would uh, just kind of echo a little bit about what you've said there, Claire, and that is we also have our career services uh, group out of uh, student services, and, and they are there at your disposal. They've got peers as well. Uh, so it's a fantastic complement to co-op or, or unto itself. Um, uh, lots and lots of resources to, to fit every kind of student uh, need where careers are, are related. So. I'll leave it at that. Great. Thank you both for that. Now, Angie, there was a question about uh, volunteering in labs. Now, we've uh, heard a little bit about related to getting experience, uh, you know, related work experience. How would somebody approach that? How would they find a faculty member who might be willing to take on a volunteer? So that's, that's a great thing to do, to get involved in research as early as possible. Um, there really, there's a, a few ways to do that. Um, choose something you, that you're interested in, go through the professors and the website uh, of the department that runs the program you're in so you get familiar with what kind of research they do. Um, if, a, if you really love taking a course from a certain professor, ask that prof about their research and ask if they are either taking on USRAs, which Ananga mentioned, which are actually paid research semesters or co-op. Yeah, you can do a co-op in a research lab doing uh, research assistant type work and, and be paid for that. Or, which is, is more common, you can also volunteer in a lab. Um, not all professors would be taking on students at a given time. So you may have to ask several of them before you find one that is, is taking new volunteers uh, at, at the time you're interested, but just talk to a few and focus on the ones that you're you're interested in. It's better to knock on the, their door than to send them emails. Um, and, uh, you know, be prepared to have a little conversation about why you find that topic interesting. That's great. Thanks very much, Andy. And I, I hope you all take advantage of that. It is a really great opportunity to learn more about what your professors are, are doing in terms of their own research and get experience. So, so that's a, a great opportunity. So we have a number of questions about uh, the different campuses. And maybe, Claire, you could chime into this. Is you know, question, are campuses uh, smaller in Surrey? And can I take classes at other campuses than my main campus? Fantastic. Um, so for everyone, just to bring us all on the same page, Simon Fraser University, we have three campuses, Burnaby on top of Burnaby Mountain, Surrey, which is right near the Surrey Central Skytrain Station, and then what we broadly call the Vancouver campus. I think it's technically like 14 different buildings, but mostly that's at Harbor Center and at the Gold Corp Center for the Arts. Um, that being said, the Faculty of Science does not offer classes at the Vancouver campus. However, an SFU student is a student of every campus. So if there is an elective course or maybe something you're interested in taking a minor in has courses in Vancouver, you can absolutely take your classes there as well. They're just not going to be your science classes, but you're absolutely welcome to take electives there. Um, the Surrey campus, we have quite a number of our first year and a handful of second year science courses at as well. 
Um, Nadia Williams, who has been one of the advisors who's been in the chat sharing links, uh, just shared that the average class size in Surrey is about 100 students. Uh, the largest lectures at the Surrey campus top out. Um, I believe there's a new one in the uh, Sustainable Energy Engineering building that's bigger, but when I say bigger, I think it's like 200 and something people. Um, in the main Surrey building, it's 100 and something people compared to say here at the Burnaby campus where, as Nehal mentioned, those lectures can be quite a bit larger. Our absolute largest lecture hall fits 504 people. For some of you, that might be bigger than the high school that you went to. Um, one of the best pieces of advice I've ever heard, and so I'll share it here too, is that the lecture hall is as big as where you're sitting in it. If you're sitting in the back row of a 500 person lecture theater, it feels like a 500 person lecture theater. I myself advocate for like front third, middle-ish, but you'll find the same spots. Um, but in particular, just being a little closer to the front, just even getting that like eye contact time with the professor, like you will be shocked how much professors notice you if you go to their office hours. And then I was like, oh, I know you, you sit in the first, you know, 10 rows or something as opposed to slinking into the back every time. Not to imply that, you know, all of us here when we were students, I'm sure had times that we just slunk to the back of a room. We're not all super keen all the time. So use your discretion, of course, but um, that's a nice way to offset those larger Burnaby campus lectures. Um, but just to quickly circle back to Surrey, if any of you um, would like to, we can have you noted as a Surrey campus student. That means you would get priority enrollment in courses offered at the Surrey campus. Um, so if you live a little bit closer to Surrey, or if you know the sound of those smaller average class sizes appeals to you, uh, Surrey could be a great option. So if that is the case, um, our science or Surrey campus advisor, Nadia Williams, is the best person to talk to. I will send her contact information in the follow-up. Uh, it's also available on our website in the meantime. Great. Thanks very much, Claire. There's one last quick question that I think, Claire, you could probably answer quite quickly. Um, questions about uh, adding a major or a minor or a joint mm -hmm. major or changing a program. When should that happen and who can help me with that? For sure. So for any of you who are interested in a joint major or a double major like Ananka is doing. So when you're admitted to SFU, you're only ever admitted to one program initially. So you can't go directly into a joint or double program. So what you'll do is add either that second major or a minor certificate, whatever the program might be that you're interested in once you're here at SFU. Each department works a little differently. Some will have a very specific list where they say, okay, to join our program, you need to complete these exact classes with these exact minimum grades. So sometimes it's very specific, um, but sometimes departments will just say, oh, we wanna see you've done a handful of courses that are related to this. They might be a little less intense about grades. I would say to paint with a broad brush across SFU, some of the programs that are a little stricter in terms of the course and GPA requirement to join are programs in biomedical physiology, kinesiology, behavioral neuroscience, um, the BD School of Business, in case anyone is interested in adding a program there. That's a couple examples of ones that have pretty specific requirements. If you are interested in one of those, I would say definitely connect with an advisor sooner rather than later. But no matter what program, connect with an advisor sooner rather than later. Uh, but you haven't missed anything. All that to say, it's not too late to add a minor or a second major. Uh, you have not missed anything. You could not do that during the application process. Great. Thank you very much for that. Now, thank you everybody for your questions. Unfortunately, that's all the time we have for today, um, but we will follow up in responding to your questions in the follow-up email. So where we couldn't get to them, we'll certainly get to you. I really wanna thank all of our participants today in the webinar. Uh, Dr. Angie Brooks-Wilson, Nahal Dudral, Magnus Billings, Claire Wilson, and Ananga Bajgai. Thank you so much for your time today and providing your information and expertise. So to conclude our event, I want to let you know about our important next steps. Class enrollment will open on next Tuesday on July the 4th, and it will continue throughout the month. We recommend you enroll in your classes as soon as your assigned date and time arrive to make sure you get the classes you're looking for and you want to take. If you need any assistance in the enrollment process, we recommend you take University Prep Step 2 course online if you haven't done so already, and it'll go through, walk you through the whole enrollment process. If you have any specific questions about what courses to take, you may want to speak to an academic advisor. We also suggest that you join the SFU Undergraduate 2023 Facebook group to meet your peers, 
join the science specific groups and continue to receive important university updates. And don't worry if you missed any information today, we will send you a follow up email with the links to the information we referenced, a link to this recording so you can watch it again at a later date or to share it with a family member who wasn't able to attend. And finally, on behalf of the Faculty of Science, we are so excited to see you here on campus. We hope that we've boosted your confidence about starting university and hope you feel you know more about what to expect when you come and join us for your classes. Enjoy the rest of your summer, stay safe, and thank you for joining us today. We look forward to seeing you soon. Thank you so much.